precisely in the 16th day of this month. A rather uncommon robbery, occurred in Tuan Moon, Hong Kong. Three men snatched away 14 boxes transported by a logistics company in broad daylight. In these boxes, there lies a large number of chips that worth $650,000. Now let's look back to last month, at the end of June. The Xinjiang police just cracked the chip theft happened in an electronic factory. One of the employees thought their management was lax, so he decided to steal some chips and made some money out of them. This is crazy. Last year we only heard the video cards were stolen inexplicably, now they are going straightforwardly to chips, huh? In fact, the global chip shortage has been reported by the media since last year. As for chips, out of stock, price soar and panic purchasing have gradually become our daily routine. But have you ever considered what's behind this globally chips shortage? And how long will the days without sufficient video card supply lasts? In today's video, we are going to talk about the chips shortage. When it comes to the chips shortage, many friends first reaction may feel like, I don't play video games, neither buying cars nor getting a new phone, so I guess the chips shortage has nothing to do with me. Well, you can aim higher. This is an electronic supply chain procurement website. Let's find its product catalog page. There are 440,000 categories under the word chip, including the power IC and the portable battery, storage IC and hard disk, RF IC and various magnetic cards, audio IC and the headset, even the camera lens contains a control chip. But this is only the area we know. In those corners where we are not familiar with, semiconductor chips have long become an indispensable part of manufacturing. It seems like people only cares about some high-end chips, represented by 7 nanometers and 5 nanometers. However, now it's not just these that are out of stock. The mature process is also in a shortage and its price is increasing in an exaggerated way. In April of this year, a batch of 8-inch wafers were bidding for as high as $1,000 per square meter. What does it imply? In the last year, without distinguishing wafer size, the average price of each piece of them only claims for $684. The tag of $1,000 hits a record for wafer prices in the past 10 years. Attention, it's just the 8-inch wafer mainly used in processing low-end smart chips. The chip we are talking about here is the integrated circuit IC, the most important part of the semiconductor industry. Based on their functions, chips can be divided into three categories. Storage chip, power chip and logic chip and the most demanded one is logic chip. Represented by computer video card, mobile SOC and automotive MCU. Goldman Sachs pointed out in the analysis report, that 169 industries in the world led by manufacturing, are affected by this chip shortage wave. From basic industrial production, to household appliance production. Even the daily chemical production such as soaps has been affected. Actually, in the chip industry, there will be a shortage every three years, but in the past, when the supply and demand in the market failed to match each other, the industry can often adjust the price to make the transition. But this chip crisis is different from any other one. The COVID-19 pandemic has become a turning point for the chip industry. The coronavirus has hung over the globe, and the world's economy has fallen into profound gloom. Sales of consumer goods like automobiles, mobile phones, and electrical appliances have fallen off a cliff. But the modern company is very sagacious. To maximize profit, they rely on the sophisticated supply chain and compress their stock at a very low level, even zero. Chip industry is exactly the typical model of a mentioned sophisticated supply chain. If we are going to separate it based on its processing, it would be design, production and package. In the whole chain, companies such as Apple, Intel and NVIDIA that have direct contact with consumers, are all design companies themselves. Once they sense the economic downturn, they would lower the market demand. In order to avoid inventory backlog, they then sent the adjusted order to foundries like DSMC for production. Step by step, this process goes to packaging, testing and product assembly. Finally the mobile phones, CPU and video cards are handed to the consumers. But obviously, the pandemic's actual situation differs from the West's prediction. It has become a long-term trouble. People have nothing to do but working domestically, and playing video games at home, which, on the contrary, has lifted the sales of PC and game console. What's more, this year is an important year, for bountiful new games have been launched. Host computer comes to a new generation, 
RTX 30 series also took a leap. Factors like these brought an abrupt increasing for electronic consumptions. Wait for production capacity is full. Everyone can go out after the pandemic got controlled, demands of cars and mobile phones started to rebound swiftly. When automakers receive surging orders, they are hurried in finding more foundries to feed these orders, only to find the goods has long been carved up by numerous tech companies. Even they are willing to pay more and add orders, the delivery date would be delayed anyway. Therefore, from last year to this moment, those automobile manufacturers who failed to catch up the market have announced to stop work, cut or even suspend the production. According to the statistics, the total losses of automakers around the globe affected by chip shortage has reached hundreds of billions of dollars. Facing the worldwide chip shortage, in order to deal with the uncertain chip supply chain in the future, automakers started overstocking these chips, increasing their inventory. The panic stocking of manufacturers made the orders far exceed the available output. The severer the upstream stock shortage was, the more orders the factories got. The production became less sufficient with the orders piling up. Output shortage led to stock shortage, the vicious cycle of chip supply and demand began. The global chip shortage wave broke out completely. This chip shortage has gradually spread to other industries from the automotive industry. And some TV manufacturers that misjudged the market rose the price. Due to the chips they need were deficient. Then other home appliances such as refrigerators and washing machines also got into the similar trouble. We can conclude that the extremely unbalanced supply and demand relationship is the main influence of the pandemic exerted on the chip industry. Apple is an example that maintained demand stability when the pandemic stroke. Even the latest iPhone 12 and M1 MacBook are of ample supply. Let alone BYD, the car manufacturer who owns their own chip production line, was able to guarantee regular car production when other rivals were suffering chip shortage. On one side are the foundries of full capacity. On the other side lies the overloading demand. Expanding chips production capacity is the only way to balance them and solve the chip crisis, and get out of the vicious circle. In fact, from 2020, wafer foundries and IDM manufacturers in the world have begun to expand their production frantically. According to the estimates of the International Semiconductor Industry Association, from 2020 to 2024, there are at least 38 new 12-inch fabs will be built. 8-inch wafer fabs will also be expected to increase by 17% in 4 years because of the level up of analog chips demand. Well, when will these fabs can be put into use? The answer is, 2 years later. The construction of a fab is quite complicated. Regardless of the billions of dollars required for upfront investment, many other factors need to be considered, say, basic hydropower resources, local policies support, condition of the related supply chain, and regional talent reserves. For instance, the reason of TSMC being the strongest fab on the planet, owes much to Taiwan's semiconductor-oriented economy. The point is, it will take about two years for a new fab from construction to equipment installation. Even so, there still remains much to concern. Enterprises as strong as DSMC, also have to purchase equipment. In this case, the demand for semiconductor production equipment has begun to surge with last year's expansion wave. But the problem is that, the equipment to make the equipment also required time to produce. What's more, electronic components needed to purchase from the upstream. So this chain narrower as it goes up? If we look at the semiconductor production capacity in the past 20 years, we'll notice that except for the super prosperity started in 2016, the capacity increased steadily every year. Which means in normal years, equipment manufacturer's outlet has been steady based on the orders. But abrupt expansion has panicked them. The needed parts were seriously out of stock, more than half manufacturers in Japan announced delayed delivery date resulted from insufficient components supply. It is not over yet. Even if the construction can be completed in one day, raw materials are not so easy to obtain. Everyone knows that chips are made of silicon and sand, so the demand for silicon has also hit the record. The chairman of Sumco, a large Japanese silicon wafer manufacturer, stated that he might have to consider rebuilding the factory in order to satisfy the silicon orders. The original production line and capacity has long been unable to meet the demand. The same applies to photoresist, an important consumable in chip production. What's outrageous is in February this year, the Fukushima earthquake has greatly affected the photoresist production line. Thus the supply became even more tensed, 
whereas these are just part of the factors. Chip manufacturing is just a small process in the whole production, including the subsequent chip packaging and testing plant. The whole supply chain must be expanded. It looks like the only thing we can do now is to make through this tough period when video cards are not so easy to get. But is it really that simple? Have it ever crossed your mind that why can we afford the high-tech products like smartphones and PCs? You know, Apple's first-generation computer, Macintosh, launched in 1984, sold for about $8,000 after taking inflation into account. However, today, more than 30 years later, $250 is enough for a brand new laptop, and it can handle most of the basic office work. The processor chip in it is designed in the United States, processing and production in Taiwan, assembly, testing and sealing in the mainland, and finally trade worldwide. That's right. It is precisely because of the extremely complex semiconductor chip industry, has been formed into a highly specialized worldwide industrial chain. Meanwhile, different countries and regions have taken full advantages in industrial chain, resources have also been allocated reasonably, so that the semiconductor is able to maintain fast development momentum, and the costs drop year by year. In this way, people can afford these high-tech products embracing the crystallization of human wisdom, and enjoy technological advancement. Such a virtuous circle has played a vital role in the development of human science and technology in the past few decades. In recent years, our country has also made full use of the power of the global industrial chain, thus has bred plenty of tech enterprises, including Huawei, and has ranked among the leading list in the international market in many fields. After three sanctions against Huawei, the domestic consumer electronics industry has subjected to a hard blow, since the ban coming into force in September last year, which has also triggered a rush on chips in mobile industry. In fact, Long before a year before the ban has been enacted, Huawei has fulfilled a large number of stock. Other brands have placed orders as well. When considering the security of supply chain and the future market share, manufacturers and other industry also started to prepare more goods in panic. This made the desperate chip shortage brought by the COVID-19 even worse. How much impact does the ban have on Huawei? Very much. But it will hurt the global semiconductor supply system even harder. According to a report by SIA, $1 trillion is about to be put forward for deglobalization. To support the transition of the industrial chain, resources are no longer being used intensively, chip supply efficiency is no longer rise the same steadily as before. This will lead to costs increase from processing to the entire industry chain, and it is the consumers who are responsible for it in the end. If we go any further, the trusted system of global chip supply will collapse, a principle that all players abide by got suspended by GM. In this environment, who can guarantee that he himself is not the next party that gets banned? After Huawei was sanctioned, more and more countries and regions have to consider the safety of semiconductor supply. In fact, China, Europe, Japan and South Korea have all announced to increase fund in the semiconductor industry this year. Among them, Europe aims to complete the autonomy of the entire industrial chain in the future. In the past few decades, many enterprises in the world have enjoyed the dividends under the wave of globalization and achieved win-win. This is where today's prosperity comes from. However, it seems like now, the horn of chip war has sounded secretly. But crisis is also an opportunity. For us after sales industry, products required to be ordered like phone display, is expected to face severe shortage and price soaring in two years. For instance, Samsung A10 displays prices as two times as before, and 6.1-inch iPhone XR display, its price mutables. As a lowball estimate, prices would continue to rise in the second half of 2021. In these chaos, nearly all orders and prices are mushrooming. Choosing a deep-rooted supplier, increasing our orders and satisfying our storage, will do more good for our business, that's all. If you have anything to say, leave a comment below and we'll know.